we're, we're sort of wrapping it up. Like the real deep and, you know, difficult parts of this mimer, I think, are behind us. But there's still some interesting little juicy tidbits in here. Um, so the Rebbe winds up concluding there that the whole point of the, the real difference between, let's say, Shlomo and, and Mashiach, or in a more Kabbalistic language, between Atik and Panemius Atik, if you're following all that, is that the, the level of, of Shlomo was like, was that the Mayan, the wellspring, where all the godly life was basically, it was clear that, the, that where you are is sort of like the source and the fountain of life and, and the God's essence is right there. It was particularly in one place and the waters of the wellsprings were able to travel and reach faraway land. So that by the time they got there, it piqued the curiosity and the interest of all those peoples to find out where the wellspring was coming from. And therefore they picked up and they traveled to Shlomo to find out what, where was the source of life. Whereas in the times of Mashiach, it's going to be different. We use the, the term which means your wellsprings will spread to the outside. We use that very exactingly. And what, what did we say that was the difference? Is that the actual wellsprings spread to the outside. Not the wellspring is in one place and the waters travel to the outside, but the whole idea of Hasidus, that Hasidus brings the level of Panemius Atik into the world. This level of essence of God, where it's clear that not just your, so to speak, your soul has a longing for Hashem and is divine, but even your body and even the vessel and even like every single entity in the world has the same level of divinity because if it's there, that means it's being created by the essence of God which is making up its existence and there's nothing else other than the essence of God in any place. So therefore, that's the idea that the wellspring is everywhere. And that's why the crying call of Hasidus is that your wellsprings will be spread to the outside. Not just the water from the wellsprings and the river, but the actual, you, everywhere you go, there'll be, and that, there'll be well, you'll realize that it's a wellspring. And that's why in the future, there will not be a need for the entities to sort of come back home and all like find the source of God in, in Eretz Yisrael, but they're going to realize that wherever they are, it's Eretz Yisrael. And mind, and mind the fact that we're living in a generation where the tzaddik of our generation did that very thing. And he would, took criticism for it. The Rebbe put shluchim on every single corner of the world. And people came to the Rebbe and they said, Rebbe, why are you sending people out to Japan? You should be sending all the Jews home to Eretz Yisrael. And Mamish, they, uh, they, would be, they were angry about it. Mm -hmm. And the Rebbe, you, you yourself never traveled to Eretz Yisrael. Why? You're living in Mamish the 80s, the 90s. Get on a plane and go to Eretz Yisrael. What's holding you back? And they couldn't figure out like, what was going on with this Rebbe, that he was Mamish creating huge Jewish communities outside. Let's bring it all home. You know, and it angered people. Mm -hmm. It's just like, distorted their whole philosophy of what they understood to be right, you know. He never came to Israel? He never came. I mean, not in a physical body that people saw. Apparently he had a, he had a chavrusa with Baba Sali every a Friday afternoon yeah. <laughs> uh, in the Baba Sali's office that people saw him there and the two of them talking like more than once, but that was, as far as we were concerned, we were also talking to him in 770 in Brooklyn at that same time. <laughs> anyway, the this? The Baba Sali's like daughter or son or something like uh, like came out with it and she was like I just have to tell everybody and then it was like it was it was it was his daughter. It was it was then confirmed by others. It's like a, it's a pretty much a fact. Mm -hmm. it, oh, it was every day. I thought it was just Erev Shabbos. Okay. Right. 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 And was sitting there side by side learning Torah. Yeah, Chavrusas. <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that uh, th this whole concept of sending shluchim and so forth, and 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 telling everybody that the whole world is Eretz Israel, and and like, and not necessarily, you know, beckoning them to, to come home. The Rebbe would say, people would, would would write into the Rebbe and say, I'm thinking about going to Eretz Israel and moving my family, which is like sort of like the Zionistic dream. And sometimes the Rebbe would say, you know, go for it. But oftentimes the Rebbe would say, well, what are you doing where you are? I'm a doctor. I'm sort of like, or I'm a janitor, whatever it is. He will, well, do you have any influence? Do you have any Jewish friends? Do you have any influence on your surroundings? He said, yeah. Did that. He said, well, well, you're there for a reason. Stay there and make there Eretz Israel." Many, 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 many letters like that. And it was like, it infuriated some types of Jews. Because they're like, why are you telling people to stay outside? The guy wants to move to Eretz Israel, let him go. And, but this is the point. 
Because basically you're going to come to a certain realization that there's not one wellspring and God is over there. The ultimate revelation is going to happen. It's going to come to realize that there's no place that's not Eretz Yisrael, not only Eretz Yisrael, but the base of Mikdash. In other words, you can take out of any particular area. And how? Hasidus. Because if you'll go there and not just hang around there and play cards, you're going to spread Hasidus over there. Teach Hasidus. Make groups of people learning Hasidus. You're going to basically uncover the wellspring right there in... <coughs> Where are you from? <laughs> he, writes, he writes in a sikha that if uh, you have a community that depends on you, you can't just pick up and move to Israel because you want to be in a holy place. But the real secret behind it is that you're, you're already in a holy place, right? That's, oh, the, that's what we're saying here. Right. But I'm saying this is the idea. So this is the idea of spreading the wellsprings to the outside world, not just the river. Isn't, yeah. Isn't there a concept that... The, 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 Kedush, the whole world is going to have the Kedush Yeah, Kedush, so. yeah. It comes from the, yeah, <laughs> the Megillah. No, it's a, it's a Marsha. He speaks about it. Rabbi has all sikh about that in the future, the whole world will have the Kedush of Eretz Yisrael, basically. That, that what does that mean? I mean, the whole world will be, will be called Eretz Yisrael. There's not, right now, it's, we have this little piece of property. In the future, we're going to have the whole world be Eretz Yisrael. There will not be any more Chutz Aretz. That's uh, that's like a known I fact. Think they were taking over. <laughs> okay. Okay. So going on, that's what we said. Now, Al Pizeh, we're on Iron Base, the second pe- chapter down. Al Pizeh Yesh Levar Piskam Admar from the Rebbe uh, Rashab Nishmas Oedin. We have to understand this statement from the Rebbe Rashab. Binyan Hagil with the Torah of Chasidis regarding the revelation of Chasidis. Shenimshach Agdi Admar Azaki, that was drawn out through the Alter Rebbe, the Achrei Peterburg, right? After Peterburg, what's Peterburg? It's a town in Russia, big, the capital. And over there, oh, yeah, yeah, that's where the Alter Rebbe was incarcerated, and that's where the whole miracle story of Yutes Kislev happened. Um, for not everyone who's not aware of this, basically, the opponents of Hasidus in the, in the times of the Alter Rebbe, they had him turned into the Russian government on false claims that he was a rebeller against the against the government and he sat in jail in like a horrible little cellar for 53 days upon which time when he came out was the basically the big, real beginning of Chabad Hasidus Chabad Hasidus differing tremendously from the Hasidus that existed before him from the Baal Shem Tov and the Magid in that he basically brought out like a whole new realm and dimension of the Hasidic teachings that at that time had been hidden and not revealed to the masses so he said that after Peterburg, um, the Alter Rebbe is al derech hazais shekeshekot shino so who motzi es shmeino. He says it's like, for example, like an olive that when you crush it, you bring out its oil. And this is what the with this is what the Rebbe Rishab, famous words of the Rebbe Rishab, the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, said about the Alter Rebbe having gone through this prison experience, which was like crushed him like an olive, but it brought out the oil. Of the reasons for this, that the revelation of Hasidus that came after Yutes Kislev, Nimshal Lashemin, why is it compared to oil? In other words, this, the, the Rebbe said it, it's not just like a little analogy. He was saying something significant for, for the ages for us to understand what happened at Yutes Kislev, what happened when the Rebbe got out of this prison and changed the world forever. <laughs> why did he call it, why did he say it's like oil that came out of an olive? Kishemen, imayosu moved on mikol davar. Shem e oil, even though it's completely re- removed from every other thing. Shalachin enu misarav meshu mashkin. That's why it doesn't mix with any other liquid. Right, it keeps itself in like a in a world of its own. You can't really mix it in. Mikol makom humefapeya bechol davar. Nevertheless, it has this opposite quality that it gets itself into everything, like. To, 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 to the, what's that? And not easy to get out. Can't get it out because it becomes like one with the thing. Right? In other words, if you, this is like, it, uh, there's a din in, uh, in, in Shulchan Aruch, basically, that you guys are probably learning now, that if there's like a dry piece of meat, basically, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the properties of being able to transfer its meatness, let's say, into a piece of cheese. Only a tiny bit where it touches. And you can just scrape it off and you can eat the cheese, you can eat the meat. You know, just have to like sort of uh, cut off the edge and like nothing happened. But if it's an oily piece of meat, 
So then the second it touches the cheese, it, the whole piece of cheese basically is fleshic. Why? Because the oil doesn't know any boundaries. The oil just has, is like this thing that just gets into everything. I'm saying al pi halacha gets into everything. It's not just like your fingers are going to get wet. It's a fact of halacha. You now can't eat this whole thing because okay. oil has this property of mifapea b'chol davar. It just, I don't know how to extra- translate the word, but it's a great word to say. But it just... Yeah, it, go, it, it gets into everything. It just, it, it, it gets its way into every single thing. Hainu shashem and atzmo mifapea b'chol davar. And that means, it's just like the wellspring, that means that the actual oil gets into every single place, not just that it like, it's the influence of the oil gets into that place, right? The actual, it gets, the actual oil somehow leaks into every single nook and cranny of a thing, not like, like the wellspring, right? It's like the, the actual source of the, of the wetness goes into every place, not just like sort of a ray or like a, a, a river of the wetness that s- sends itself out. So in other words, the idea of the oil is it has this property that it will, it will find itself in every place. Even though on one hand, it, the same oil, it, it won't mix into anything, right? It has this property of staying completely separate and completely removed from all other things. So it has this dual nature. So why does the Rebbe Shav compare Yud Tes Kisla, the ninth of Kislev, and the new sort of world order that the Alter Rebbe brought in at that time to an olive oil, to oil, because that's when the real beginning of the, of the crying call, that your wellsprings will spread out to the outside world began. Where do we first hear this, this statement? What's that? Baal Shem Tov, the, right? What happened? Baal Shem Tov had this famous Elias on the Shama. He left his body basically, and he went up into the heavenly worlds, and he went from chamber after chamber, and he saw millions and hundreds of millions of souls like following him, and and he and and he was he he went up and he found his way into the chamber of Mashiach, and he said, "A Masai Ka'asei Mar." He quoted the Gemara. When when is the Master coming? And and he said, Mashiach said to the Baal Shem Tov, when your wellsprings will spread out, this, this quote that we're quoting, when your wellsprings will spread out to, to the distant places. Basically, when, Hasid, when the Hasidic teachings will like cover the world, because the Baal Shem started the Hasidic teachings, that's when I'll come. So it's brought that that process didn't even start until the Alter Rebbe came out of prison. Even though there was a Baal Shem Tov and there's a Magad of Mezrich and there was an Alter Rebbe already teaching Hasidis until... After he came out of prison, where he started like a brand new level of Hasidic teachings, and that's why, because he, he was crushed, and finally the oil came out of him. So once there was this presence of this oil from the Rebbe, then the process of spreading the wellsprings to the outside places could begin. Because basically, he brought down the Penimius Atik. At that moment of the release from prison, this level, this channel of, of bringing the essence into the world, not once in 5,600 and some years had it been done yet. And when he got out of prison, that's what he did. He brought into the world a new channel from the Penimius Atik that had never been done before. So you're talking about, that's why Hasidus is, in, is discussing this topic so much because Hasidic Hasidus is this thing. And it was this that he brought it down. He made a channel. He made an opening for it. What, what was that opening? The teachings of Chabad Hasidus. That's what it is. And that only really began after, after Petersburg. The Panemius Atik who moved on Mikol Yishtalshus. And why is it like oil? Because what is Panemius Atik? If you recall what we said before, it's completely removed from the Yishtalshus. On one end, it has this property that it doesn't mix in with anything. If you recall, we said that when it comes to the three levels... The lowest level is already the source of the worlds, right? And therefore it even has like the ten spheros there in their source. And therefore we said in the pre- previous mimer that it's called tzedakah when you give that to the worlds. Because tzedak, because the worlds really are already had it and it's very shy to the worlds. And the worlds are lacking in their worldliness. If they don't get it, therefore when you give it to them you fix their lack and therefore, this lowest level is mamish connected with the world. It's, it's totally the lowest level of keser is an inyan of the hishtal shluz mamish. But even the higher level, where basically we said this is like the level of shlomo, and it's called atik. And what is atik? We said it's like divorced from the world. But even though you're divorced, there's still something you're divorced from. So even though it's a level of wealth 
and you're giving sort of something that the world does not need to get by. You're giving something like a wondrous gift that's beyond the needs of the world. And you're making the world wealthier than it ever was, even upon its creation. This is the level of Shlomo. It's still not completely divorced from the world because it's called Atik. It's called divorced, which means it knows what it's divorced from. There's still like in some realm of its consciousness the notion that there is a world and it's divorced from it. So these two lower levels of the Kesser, they're not completely like oil removed entirely from mixing in with the Seder Ishtalshlus. But the Penimius of Atik, it's the essence of Hashem. It precedes the ten spheres, it precedes the Orin Sof. And it's just Mamish, God's essence which comes before God created the existence of anything else. So certainly it can't mix in and be attached to the existence of creation when it is the level of Hashem which precedes existence. And therefore it's called oil because it's totally separated from anything having to do with what comes later. So not only separated from the Ishtal it's certainly separated from the Klippas and so forth. More than the external aspect of Atik. And this is dugma shemen she'enu mis'arav b'shar mashkin. And this is why we call it oil, because it doesn't mix with any other liquids. But afal pichain, nonetheless, mitam ze gufa. From this very reason, dafka la'achra yutes kislev huschala in india futsu manosecha chutza. From this reason exactly that it doesn't mix in with any other liquids, and it is beyond the world entirely. That's why... After Yudas Kislev specifically, it began the notion of spreading your wellsprings outward. In other words, to the lowest places. That in the, in the chutza, you can find the actual mayan. Just like shemen, in other words, that's the other aspect of shemen. Shemen, that it can get into every single place, and there's nowhere that it itself cannot be found. Not just a ray of it, or like a, a, a sort of a... a an imprint of it, but the thing itself, so it has these, both these two qualities. In other words, because you're dealing with a level which is beyond existence, okay, and that's why it's oil which is removed from the world, when that level will be invited into existence, okay, and it will come into every, in other words, and that's what happened on Yutes Kislev, that means that if you're able to sort of tap into this level of divinity, then no matter where you are in existence, you'll get to the same place. You'll get to a point that you're, that everything is basically one. There's no more distinguishing qualities between one part of existence and another part of existence, or one is higher and one is lower, because you've accessed the essence which equalizes basically everything, and that's what it means. The oil can get into every single place. This level of beyond existence, it will find itself equally, whether in Yerushalayim or whether you're in Russia, because basically it's the underlying essence of God which is found everywhere in existence. So that's why basically he related it to oil. On one hand, because he's dealing with such a high thing, that's why he, it, it can be found every single place and the wellspring itself can be spread to the outside world. Is that, is that clear, all that stuff, or not exactly? That's basically the connection to oil to Yutes Kisle. But maybe we should bring it a little bit more understood. How are you guys doing there? You following this? You get it? Okay. But isn't, isn't it that Hashem's presence is greatest in, in Israel? Well, that's the thing. It's like on, on one level, yes. <laughs> but on another I mean, level... Everywhere, I understand it's everywhere, but, but I thought the, the strongest presence at this point is here. Israel at this point? Like at this that. point. But the point is, is that what's, what's the concept of saying that everywhere in the world is, is really Eretz Israel? It just doesn't know it yet. Because every time you're in a situation where there's something higher and something lower, that Eretz Yisrael is holy and Chutz Laaretz is not holy, you're clearly dealing with a level of divinity which recognizes the dif- first of all, it recognizes worlds, and it recognizes that one world is higher than another world. So what you're, you're, you're automatically in what we call the Seder Ishtalshel. The Seder Ishtalshel is that there's ten spheros, Chochmah's on the top, Malchus on the bottom, and divinity is dividable into parts, some being higher than others. That's fine. That is a true. That is a truth. But it's a truth on a very low level of what God really is. Because in a certain sense, is why are the heavens higher? Because they can contain more godliness. Why is the earth lower? Because it contain less. It can contain less godliness. So when you're dealing with containing more or containing less, what are you really talking about? You're talking about a level of divinity which Bichlal cares and is limited by 
vessels. That because you're going to make me a big vessel, so I'll put more of myself into you. A little or vessel, I'll put less of myself. By definition, you're talking about a limited aspect of God, which is containable by the vessels. And therefore, since Eretz Yisrael is like more refined and holier, it's going to take from the higher worlds. And the outside of the land is... is so. But, but that whole talking like that means you're discussing a level of divinity where it recognizes the worlds. Which means Hashem has already descended Himself into some relationship with worldliness and limitation. You follow me? So the whole so you're right that even by Shlomo Melech, which was good times for the Jews, we were telling everyone, "Come home there to Israel." This is a chiddush. This is saying that we're going to get to a point where godliness knows no bounds. There's nothing less holy about a stone in Brooklyn than there is a stone in in, in Yerushalayim. Why? Because you're dealing with the level of God where He is the only thing there is. So there's no, he's not limited to, I can shine here more than I can shine there. So France has the same holiness as Israel? France and, and, and everything, mm-hmm. right? Pluto also, because if it exists, then God is there. And the only reason why we don't see the same measure of God is because in the, in the meantime, the temporary distribution of godliness that he's putting into the reality, he's using a, a relative, relatively small dose of elokus, of godliness. And therefore, it will only, it, 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 what's, what's, what makes it small is that it basically will only go where it's invited. And therefore, if you, in Eretz Israel, he's invited. This is the Holy Land. In France, he's definitely not invited. So we're saying it's a place yeah, of exactly. Tuma and Klippa. Okay? But that's because, the only reason is, is because we're saying that they're not allowing, you know, let, let, me, let me clarify it once again. Right? There is a level of godliness which is, not be able is not able to be bound and put into something, right? It can't be put into something. In other words, you want to say that in Eretz Yisrael is a, is a piece of land, it has boundaries. And we're saying that God poured more of himself into there than he did into France, right? Like, because like France, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, okay? France doesn't have any godliness in it, let's say. It's a dark place. And why? Because when Hashem tried to pour himself in there, the vessel was too small. Right? There's not enough like openness in France. There's not enough holiness in France to allow the godliness to shine there. Right? And that's the difference basically between Jerusalem and France. Is that Jerusalem has what we call a bigger vessel and therefore it can just like for example your your head and your foot, right? Why is your head the source of your mind and your vision and your ability to speak and your sense of smell, all these wondrous things and your emotions can come out through your face and so forth. Your foot just walks and on a good day, you know, you know, it doesn't trip. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have all these wondrous ob- like, like qualities. And why is that? Because it's not an intrinsic like, necessity that that is the case. Hashem made it in such a way that your mind is just like a more, is a, is a, is a more you know, wondrous type of vessel, a bigger vessel, let's say, which is able to hold bigger powers of divinity inside of it. So when Hashem sort of sends down the, the line all of His godliness, if you've got a big bucket, you're going to catch more rain. If you've got a little bucket, you're going to catch less rain. So your foot is just a tiny... It doesn't have much going for it. It doesn't have eyes, ears, a brain. So it just all it gets from the godly powers is the ability to walk. And therefore it's called a small vessel versus a big vessel. Right? So this is like the difference between Jerusalem and France. France is not ho- the Holy Land because it doesn't have it doesn't have a lot of a big enough vessel to catch all the wondrous divinity that's available. Okay, you following that? Yeah, yeah. That whole conversation is under the assumption that you can hold God to begin with. That one vessel can hold more of Him and one vessel can hold less of Him, which is true because you're you're in your brain, you've got more things going for you than your foot. But it's not. That's that level where God can be limited and He can be bigger or smaller. He can be found more in one place or found less in another place. This is only because you're dealing with an aspect of Godliness Himself who, who, who contracted Himself and made Himself limit, limitable, limitable, right, by whatever the size of the vessel is. But that's not, that is not the real God. If God wants to, let me tell you, He can make your foot speak. And think and walk like a man. And mamish, you know, be wise. There's no, there, if you think about it, there's really no reason why that can't happen. The fact that you're like this ju- like jello of your brain can somehow, it's just a piece of flesh like your foot. The fact that that can suddenly like have consciousness 
and personality versus like this bone of your body doesn't or this piece of flesh with inside of your foot doesn't, that itself is just a crazy reality. Why is it that this thing holds, this vessel holds more and this vessel holds less? That's just like a, a decree from Hashem like that. But in reality, there's no reason he couldn't put all the light of your entire personality into your foot if he wanted to. Right? And, and that's basically what Mashiach is going to show. It's going to show that every single place, it has the totality of Hashem in it. And this that you've been seeing up until now is just a very watered-down version of Hashem that expressed itself more here or less here. But that's only a limited version of God. It's an aspect of God which is brushes up and, and, and comes into contact with the Seder Ishtar and therefore is limited. Would you say that's due to limited capacity on our it's, it's be, well, Hashem made the world like that, and as we've been slowly working on the world and making it better and better, we've been what we call expanding the capacity of the vessels. So, it, it, so as we expand the capacity of the vessels, we open up the ability for more godliness to find itself in different places. That's what Jews are doing, going around with these Torah and mitzvahs. We're taking the world and we're making it godly. You can make the world godly in France, but, but there are certain periods of history when certain great men came along and did like huge new eras of this, of this process, like Noah, Abraham, Moshe, you know, there was ages, Alter Rebbe, there was ages when they came in with like a brand new level, and this is like the idea of crushing the oil. He did such a job on himself, and he brought out such a new level, it was really his work that did this. His holiness and his awesomeness, his avoda, that brought the whole world to a new level of service. He was like a all of that got crushed, which means suddenly an aspect of divinity from this level of the Panemius Atik was suddenly able to be, the world had refined itself enough by him breaking his own body, basically. The world had refined itself enough that you could actually make a foot talk. That's what he did. That's the level of divinity. He brought an unlimited level of godliness, which does not know the boundaries of the world at all. Because look where it comes from. It comes from a place which is not mixed in with the world at all. It comes from a place where the world is beyond existence of the world. So if you can get that to come into the world, you make the world itself be beyond its own existence. And all of a sudden it sounds pretty nice being nullified. Right? Because when you're nullified, you're, you're not blocking the godliness oh, yeah. from being in any particular place. Your foot can talk. You, you, you can all of a sudden, in a lowly rock, you can be like an angel expressing like divine powers. Because as long as you're not in the way, then you let God be in that way. The only thing is you have to give up yourself. Now it sounds like maybe it's worth it. How do you do that? You have to work on yourself like the Alter Rebbe, like basically containing your animalistic drives, behaving in accordance with the way the Torah wants you to behave on all levels. And that's basically what we call taking yourself out of the way. In place of your previous thought, speech, and actions, you now have God's thought, speech, and actions inside. It doesn't mean you don't, you're not aware of them. It just means you, what you're aware of is now God instead of you. To reprogram, yourself. to reprogram yourself according to Hashem's program. Sounds cleaner. It's much cleaner. It's, it's without waste. And waste is smelly. Okay. So, that's what we're saying. What happened in this class? It just got all out of hand here. <laughs> okay. Let's but we got one more. We got one more line to go. <laughs> Levi, don't leave me. All right. What's that? Of a, on that note about um, a tzaddik, he he would drink his. I can't remember exactly who it was, but he'd, he'd be drinking his tea and he'd have like a sugar cube and he just put it on his hand. Mm -hmm. And then and his son was like, "What? What are you doing? Like, what's going on?" And he he said, "Normally you have to, you know, you have to put it in your mouth and taste it." get the sweetness. Right, I hear you. Yeah, it's, in, it, it's unlimited. I didn't get it. You'd base. He's able to experience the sweetness of the sugar cube by just putting it in his hand. He could taste it by putting it just in his hand. Like we're saying, like yeah. it, there's no reason why Dafka, your tongue of all the limbs of your body is like your your sensor of, of sweetness. Right? It has taste buds. It's Understand, but what is a taste bud? You take oh, it off. No, it's no, just no, like, no, in, no, in, in other words, nerve. Nerve. Yeah, understood. But in other words, it's, it's what makes a nerve, you know, suddenly more, you know, receptive to... It. At the end of the day, it's a piece of flesh, right? There's yeah. spirituality, basically, is what you're, what you're saying. When you say a nerve and suddenly, oh, oh it's a nerve. So, so, but why is it different than a rock? It's just made of the same matter, just to put in different pieces, in, in different uh, combinations, you know? It's because what happens when you put things in different combinations, a different spiritual 
energy is able to come in there, making your tongue be able to taste and your foot only be able to walk and not taste. So why can't I taste sugar with my head? Because you're not the Alter Rebbe. In other words, we, we haven't, we haven't, we're, we're still dealing with reality in this sort of divisible form where we don't experience like the true essence of divinity where he is everywhere, where taste is in your hand as well. We're not on that level. You just got to Yeshiva. <laughs> right. Give, give, it, give, it, give it a few weeks. <laughs> you want to be that high, yeah. you want to taste that high, but you don't want to be that high. I don't get it exactly. I'm sorry. Like, in other words, you want to, you want to just take a little, you know, like oh. taste here and there. Right. You know? Enjoy. According to Hasidus, it's, you, don't, you, don't you don't even you don't even want to taste the honey. <laughs> so we held the breakfast last night. It's so good. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, it's like I, I, it, the idea is you don't want to like put your head in the honey jar. Just like be a mensch, you know. But according to Hasidus, it's like there's no room for really pleasures at all, you know. Instead of honey, put salt. Okay. Anyway, the old days. Oh, Let's try another line. We didn't we didn't go far enough. Al derech zeh hu agilu de Hanukkah. Ah, this is where we wanted to get to two days ago. So according to this, now we can all oh, we can understand Hanukkah. O bifrat agilu de deros Hanukkah, and particularly the revelation of the Hanukkah candles. Shetiknu mipnei anes sheabeshemin. Right, Hanukkah was like this Kabbalistic Hasidic Chabad Hasidic holiday <laughs> two thousand years ago already. It just didn't come revealed until now. Why is Hanukkah sitting in Kislev? Which is the holiday of Yud Tes Kislev and Yud Kislev, and the, it's all Kislev is basically a holiday that Chabadniks took for themselves in the calendar. If you're not aware of that, you know, check us out, because it's the whole thing is about is about Hasidus, right? And it became like the the the, the Rosh Hashanah of Hasidus. So Hanukkah was sitting there minding its own business, and really it was like the ultimate Hasidic holiday from the beginning. It's just a Hasidin hadn't been, Hasidus hadn't been revealed yet, so no one really knew what, exactly what it was. But all of a sudden you see that the Yutes Kislev is an Indian of oil, right? This whole, the whole idea of Kislev was supposed to come down was that the Panemius of Atik was destined to come down in Kislev. And that is related to oil, as we just said. This, this thing which is beyond the worlds, which therefore can be everywhere in the world. And that's why the sages fixed it that the miracle of Hanukkah will be done with oil. Shuagilu the Panemius Atik. They were already saying that Hanukkah had an Indian of Panemius Atik. And this that it's explained in the previous Hasidic discourses, Shamayla the Neros Hanukkah, and we brought this in the beginning, if you can remember the beginning of this mimer, that what's great and wondrous about the, the, the candles of Hanukkah, Lagabe Neros Hamikdash, over and above the candles of the Beis Hamikdash, what does the Hanukkah candles have over and above the Mikdash candles? Is that the Giloy of the Neros Hanukkah who Lamaila Mishtaushlus? So one of the main thing we said is that Hanukkah represents above the Hishtaushlus. Uh-huh. The, the the seven candles of the Mikdash represent the Hishtaushlus. What's the Hishtaushlus? The idea from head to toe. Mm-hmm. This orderliness of divine distribution mm-hmm. of godly powers depending mm-hmm. on the vessels, right? That whole thing is that's called the mm-hmm. Hishtaushlus. Mm-hmm. The word Hishtaushlus comes from the word Shalshelis, which means a chain. That one link is connected to the bottom, and it's all basically in this orderly it's like the world. Same thing. It's the same thing. Right? Shalshelet is a chain. Shalshelet is like chaining down. Okay? So he says that the level of Hanukkah, which is eight, represents going above the Seder Ishtal Shalus. And the, there, and the candles of the Mikdash, which are the number seven, represent the orderly, like the seven days of the week, the recurring theme of the Ishtoshus. Ah, Shaklalus HaKeser. Even though, generally, Keser, even Arich, even the lowest part of Keser, Rumal Kol Shekein Chitzoni is Atik, and how much more so, the middle level, which we're calling the external part of Atik, even though both of them are Lamay Lami Ishtoshus, in a certain sense, they are still above the Ishtoshus, because they're above the whole ten spheros, Yesh Lomer, nonetheless, um, okay, so, so what he's saying is if you, if you recall Sorry, I'm holding you up a little bit here But if you recall We have one minute If you recall We had a question at the beginning of the mimer. I have to remind us because we pushed it to, It was a long time ago we learned it We got to this whole, th- this whole thing saying that Hanukkah was eight And the Mikdash menorah was only seven yeah. Which shows that the 
the Mikdash was the Seder Ishtoshlus Indian, and the Hanukkah is the Indian of a higher than the Seder Ishtoshlus. But then we said, what? Wait a second. The Mikdash was Mamish, a, a, a divine revelation on earth. It was totally beyond the Seder Ishtoshlus. Shlomo Melech was basically busy, busy bringing peace on earth and nullifying all the enemies because he was accessing something above the Seder Ishtoshlus. Why are you calling the Mikdash, the seven branch menorah, Seder Ishtoshlus, and Hanukkah is above? So now we're saying that because they're all really above the Seder Ishtoshlus in the, in, the, in, the, in the strict meaning of the word. They're all above nature. But even in the realms of above nature, there's levels which are still connected with the Seder Ishtoshlus and there's levels which are completely, not only divorced, but just non, there's no connection whatsoever from the Seder Ishtoshlus. And that's what he's saying, that when you get up into Kesser, where you're in, officially beyond the Seder Ishtoshlus, you still have Arich and Atik that have some dealings with the Seder Ishtoshlus, which is why we said none of them are able to actually bring the world to a state of perfection, because they're all in some way tainted by the same problem that the world has, which is that they're dealing with a limited realm of godliness. And therefore, when we say Dafka Chanukah is above the Seder Ishtoshlus, we're saying that it's fully above any relationship with the Seder Ishtoshlus altogether. In other words, it's Panimius Atik. It comes from the essence where any notion or any leanings towards the Seder Ishtoshlus doesn't even exist. And that's what we mean when we say that Dafka Chanukah is above the Seder Ishtoshlus, whereas the menorah is not. Not that it's not Bechlal above, but that even in above the Seder Ishtoshlus, the menorah still has some dealings with the Seder Ishtoshlus. As we've been saying the whole class, basically, they're, even in the realms of divine light, which is supernatural, they're still basically, the idea, I'm divorced from you, so I still have a relationship with you, and therefore I can't fully undo you. So this is what we mean, basically, that the Hanukkah is fully above the Seder Ishtoshlus, because it gets to a place where it makes, and this is to your point, it makes up and down Lamaila and Lamata equal. That when you get to this level of the Panemius Atik, it comes to a point that there is now no distinction anymore between Eretz Israel and France. Right? Because you're dealing with the wellspring is everywhere. If the wellspring is in one place, and, and, and then it's, even if it's giving the full amount measure of light and revelation to another place, you're still making a difference between where the wellspring is, the source of life, and everything else is just receiving from the source of life. So there's a difference there between high and low. When you get to the panemius of Atik, the essence of Hashem, that everywhere you are, the essence of Hashem is there, then you've fully undone the whole notion of high and low, and we'll finally get to a point where the whole world will be Eretz Yisrael, or your foot will see God. It says, it says, that, it says, it says at a certain point that, kol basr yire, that, the, that your flesh will see God. Hmm. Not your eyes. In the, in the, the, the future, you know, like your, your hand will, will taste the sugar. That's what's going to be going on. Only we get to a point where there's no more distinction anymore between high and low. And you can only do that when you get to the highest level of divine essence where it doesn't even know from worlds. Where it doesn't even have to deal with distributing some measure of light to this world and a lesser measure of light to that world because it's beyond the worlds altogether. And that's what we mean that Hanukkah is beyond the Seder Ishtar Hanukkah is a... We just got through saying that you test Kislev reaches to the Panemius Atik. But in reality, Hanukkah already had that waiting for it and just required Yutes Kislev to bring it out. All right, I see we're losing uh, our crown here, so we'll stop. Okay. Shukaya. Shukaya. Thanks. Another awesome today. Good morning. Good morning. Are we going to dive in about 25 minutes. Now, now that the good thing about it.